Hello, welcome back. Hello, welcome back to IT Security Labs. And in this video, we're going to be exploiting Bounty from Hack the Box. This is yet another machine that is uh, encouraged for those who want to go for the OSCP. And I'm one of those people, so I'm going through a bunch of Hack the Box machines and Bounty is one of them. Today is a Windows machine, an easy one and our IP address is on 10.10.10.93. So without wasting time, let's get into our Kali and sign in. Okay. And once we're in Kali, first thing that we need to do is ping that machine, make sure that our connection is working. As you can see, my VPN connection to the lab is up and running then the next order of business is to run nmap with our default scripts and for this machine you just run nmap default scripts scripts like this i'm out in, outputting to a file named nmap in this location and enter and i've already done this because I respect your time. So here are the results. As you can see, it only looks like we have port 80, which always makes me think that um, there's some web application going on there <coughs> that needs to be attacked. Every time I see port 80, um, it always almost end up just being a web app exploitation, no kernel or anything funny. So. We don't have a lot to work on except that it's Microsoft IIS. And from a video that I made earlier, when I go for Microsoft uh, websites, it's usually .aspx, .asps, and some uh, configuration files. So I went ahead and fired up Durbuster. And this time we will be specifying the We'll be specifying the extensions so as you can see actually it's go buster and we're specifying that we want to direct to brute force directories and this is the url right here and this is the word list that we're using after a while you probably have seen that we always use this word list and, and unless maybe there's some special circumstance i try to start with this one specifying here the time we're specifying here that these are the extensions that we want, as you can see, and the timeout is 30, and let's do an enter, and this will run for a long time, as you can see, but I already did it out of respect for our time. In fact, it's still running, as you can see, and I'm getting slash uploaded files, and there's more of them. Okay, so there's a uploaded files that's giving us a 301 error, but we also have a transfer.aspx. So let's go check it out. So what we do is we launch our Firefox. <coughs> we don't need these. These are from my previous video if you just watched it. And this is 10.10.10.93. First, let's see what's going on on that website. Okay. Is this an image? Okay. So what I like to do here is I will save the image. Just in case at a later time I need to do something about it. So... Let's go to our um, bounty, save it in here, then um, view page source, just in case there's any comments that will give me any information, and it doesn't look like there's anything here. So because of that, we will proceed to our slash from our results here. 
we will transfer dot ASPX. So that's where we want to go. And remove that. <laughs> and we have a file upload app or something like that. But this time it looks like we have a file upload. And our default way is to upload files to this thing. And since it's a transfer to ASPX, we want to we can start with an ASPX file to see if we can upload. And if we can, put our payload in there, get a reverse shell, and we'll be good. But let me just try to upload the image that I just uh, downloaded. So if I've got my d documents. Okay, so we have that image. I just downloaded it. Let's see if I can upload it. Upload. So the image upload was successful. That's good. So we know that this thing actually works for us. Let me do this and let's look at some ASP uh, shell code from our Kali. And the reason why we want to do that is let's just uh, locate some ASP shell code, copy it to our boundary location and see what we can whether we can upload it or not. So if I do a find dot ASP what no 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 it's a locate dot ASP X maybe. Oh we have more. So I want to copy this one the web shell one just to for testing purposes documents so I'm copying this and I want to copy it here if I do an ls I now have a cmd isp dot aspx let's copy this file to our shell and see what happens uh, let's do a browse it's right here open upload invalid file isn't that interesting so it says invalid file yet transfer transfer dot asp so this is a waste of my time i know that i can upload images so maybe there's an exploit with image images um <laughs> yeah and even if i try it dot asp it won't work either so let's move on okay so for an easy machine this actually took me for a loop for a second um i could not upload <laughs> asp i could not upload um python scripts i, I tried all different ones as, as you can see this is this is the error that i keep getting then i did some research spent some time probably 30 minutes just try and find a way that works and this is what i found I found this wonderful article here. It's called um, "Uploading Web Config File for Fun and Profit," and it looks like we can upload a Web Config file and put a payload inside of it. And this is a wonderful blog post that I'm going to uh, document and write down. And I also found out <coughs> about a new one. Well, there's well, there's another blog post as well. Let's see. This is the other blog post that I found. <laughs> and um, it, it talks about the same identical thing. In fact, this one references that. That's how I got to this one. But um, the most important thing from here is you can put a web.config and have a shell spawn from it. And it, in this case, since we're on Windows, it could be a PowerShell uh, script. But here's what I really like that uh, actually stuck with me. When come across a file upload, try to upload platform specific files. And in this case, it's a Windows machine. So the .config file definitely is part of the platform. It says don't give up and don't upload shells, which is what I did for 30 minutes, <laughs> but rather upload a file that echoes your username or something. So that's very helpful. And uh, these two, I will probably link them in the description for you. But uh, Let's follow the proof of concept. So if you uh, find these articles and you want to follow, let's see if we can uh, follow this proof of concept here. So this is a uh, web.config. Let's just do this. I'll just copy this. Come in here. 
and make web dot config insert please edit paste okay so it looks like I have my web dot config in here if I escape quit web can I do that can I list that yes so I can quit that now that it's in here let's go back to our site let's see if we can get that web.config in fact no let's go back to our web.config here and response dot write um, okay yeah we can try that let's upload that web.config browse file web.config open upload okay file upload successful uploaded files we found this information right here show you we have a slash uploaded files so we can go back here 10.10.10.93 10 10 slash uploaded file is there something there okay okay let's do a web dot config okay so we get a three which is what uh, if we look here let's cancel this I don't need that anymore if we look here we are saying write response one plus two so we can we could have written any response here and it would have been fine so what this shows me is that we can actually uh, execute arbitrary code by just uh, putting it in here, which is really good because we wrote a response one plus two, which is equals to three, and it, this thing actually executed this command. So that's good. The next, let's do, let's modify our web.config to become shell.config. And since we're on a Windows machine, we'll put a PowerShell one-liner and I'll, I'll show you which one I, I'll be using. Okay, so there are two things that I need to do here. First, I need to host my shell.py here, my PowerShell script. And this is going to be coming from GitHub from this page. Let me just find it, the link here. This is a one-liner reverse shell that we can host on our computer. And there we go. And this is a one liner that we just need to uh, change the port and the IP address for our system, and we should be good. So let's do that. Copy. I'm putting it in the root directory. Right. Root directory here. It's not .py. It's a Python script. It's, it's a PowerShell script. So if you insert and paste it in here, that's what it looks like. So instead of 80, EOS 2 is listening on 4444. Instead of 10, EOS 2 is on 14.33. Escape. So this is the power payload. Um, this is the one that we need to get to our victim machine using our web.config. So let's create our web.config. Okay, so we have edited our web.config file. Now we are just uh, writing it so that you can download our shell.psy to our victim machine. Then once it downloads it there, we can uh, access this shell.psy using this URL. Uh, not using, no, not using this URL, using the uploaded location. 
and execute it. So it's the same deal. Uh, if we exit out of here and right quit. So now our job is to get web.config to our machine. How do we browse? And I want to go home. Should have a web.config in here. Open. Upload. So that's successful. Next, we want to go to 10.10.10.93. Uploaded files. Web.config. And I'm already listening on Netcat on 444 right there. So if everything works correctly, I should get a shell here. Oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot to start my Python server to listen here. History grab python so on 497 of course i need to start serving that so that this can actually download it now i'm not sure if this will work anymore let's see maybe if i invoke this one more time. Yes, as you can see, guys, the connection succeeded. I uh, can ID an ID. There we go. <laughs> so I can see ID. No ID. Who am I? So I'm mailing, uh, that's not good, mailing. So I can go to mail's folder and find the flag, that's fine. Uh, I'm not interested in the, in the flag, I just wanna get to root, but you can find the flag and use it to hack the box. That's okay. Okay, can I? Okay, so I extendedly broke my shell so I'm going to end this video here. Next, we're going to do privilege uh, enumeration. Uh, pre pre previous. Next, we're going to do um, privilege escalation. So stay tuned for the next video. Otherwise, uh, that was the first part of um, this machine. Thanks for watching.